Hey everybody, welcome to Solo Growth Part 2. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off in Part 1. We just solved a Solo Growth model. We solved for the steady state capital. Uh, our change in capital evolves like this. We assumed a square root K for our production function of capital per worker to output per worker. So Y equals that. We assume people are saving 30% of their money and that capital stock depreciates at 10% a year. And all of that stuff led to a steady state capital of nine. Now, how did we get that? We set the change in capital equal to zero. That's why it's steady. Capital per worker is constant, which meant that S F of K equaled delta K, which meant that 0.3 square root of K equaled 0.1 K and that broke down to k equals nine. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna do a couple of brief changes to this model to solve for different steady state capitals, and then I'm gonna switch over to an illustration in Excel that's cooler than what I can draw personally. So let's make a change. What happens if our policy makers do something that changes saving to 0.4? Well, if we're gonna save more money, that means we're gonna do more investing. Remember, uh, investing equals savings times production equals S F of K. All right, so if we're gonna invest more, there's gonna be more capital. Or right, sorry, if we're gonna save more, there's gonna be more capital. But let's see what our new steady state will be. We set the change in capital equal to zero. Uh, S F of K equals delta k, that's 0.4 times the square root of k equals 0.1 k. This is gonna break down to be k equals 16. Or a different change we could do. Let's say that the change, that our savings rate is still 0.4, but let's now increase depreciation so our capital dies faster. Let's increase it to 0.2. We would set change in capital equal to zero. S F of little k equals delta k. Let's see, it's gonna be 0.4 square root of k equals 0.2 k. That's gonna break down to be k star equals four. All right, that's pretty much all we're gonna do for this part of our class. We know how to solve for the steady state level of capital. Now I wanna switch over and show you a little bit of intuition into uh, what this looks like graphically and we'll do some numerical examples. So I've got this thing programmed to give me uh, little y as a function of little k. In this case, I have it to the 0.5 power, so it's the square root function. I have savings of 30%, depreciation of 10% plugged in, and I've got this graph then which plots my SF of K, my investment curve in orange, and my depreciation curve in gray. Now, I already solved and showed you that the steady state is nine, and notice these things cross here at nine. Uh, one thing that we sometimes are interested in is questioning, based on where we start, how does our evolution go? to get towards the steady state. So for instance, the steady state is nine. If I start at six, I've got a simulation up here that shows in year one I have six, which the square root of six is 2.45. Our consumption based on that will be 70% of 2.45. Our investment's 30% of it. There's, depreci uh, there's depreciation and there's how fast capital is changing. So the next year, Capital rose by I minus delta K, sorry, I minus DK, uh, rose by 0.3, and so capital is bigger than it used to be, which means we have more production, we have more consumption, more investment, also more depreciation, but capital is still increasing. And I'm gonna trace this down through a whole bunch of years, and you're gonna see that as we go, our level of capital will get closer 
and closer and closer to the steady state. It is the infinite end of where this model goes. Uh, now, what happens if I started with too much capital? If I started with 11 units of capital, uh, our depreciation would outweigh our investment. Here's the SF of K numbers, the investment numbers, and here's depreciation. That will be a net loss for the amount of capital. And capital will fall. Capital will fall as we approach the steady state. And so that's shown on here. Left of the steady state, investment outweighs depreciation, which will, as time goes, push us to the right towards higher capital. Over here on the right side, depreciation outweighs investment, which means over time our capital stock will depreciate until it's steady state. All right, the next example I showed, I won't be as pedantic this time. What happens if the saving rate rises to 0.4? I already told you the steady state capital is 16. Why? Because that orange curve moves. We save more, this whole investment curve pivots, and now the new steady state is 16. Or what if we then change depreciation? If I doubled the rate of depreciation, I told you that the capital, uh, the steady state capital would now be four. Let's see if that holds. Well, this one should change the slope of the gray line, not the orange line. Of course, Excel changes it, but trust me, it didn't change. The gray line is the one that pivoted out, and now these intersect at four. And so we can change anything in this model and we will find a steady state. Now that doesn't mean that we will instantly go to the steady state. I showed you earlier, if you start at some level of capital that's off of the steady state, it might take a while to get there. The point is, is that we eventually will. And with growth models, we're talking about very long term. Growth is a long term phenomenon, so it's okay if it takes a while to get to the steady state. The point is that that's where the economy is heading. Now, just for fun, let's illustrate some more changes. What if our production function gets more capital heavy? Well, that pivots the whole thing up. I guess I don't have it coded enough to do that one. So never mind that one. Let's make it be less capital intensive. That changes our steady state by pivoting this thing downwards and having a lower steady state than before. We decrease savings. The whole orange curve shifts downwards. If we increase savings, the whole orange curve shifts upwards. If we move any parameter in the model, these curves move around, but it's always going to center on this, this intersection. And the idea that if we are left of it, the model pushes us this way. And if we're right of it, the model pushes us this way until this is where we wind up. So, hope that was helpful to you. If not, you know, too bad. But thanks for watching anyway. Good luck, you guys. Enjoy your econ.